Okay, hi there. Welcome to another in our series of macro key diagrams. If it's okay with you, let's spend a few minutes thinking about a key concept in fiscal policy, and that is crowding out. So some economists uh, fear that higher government spending, increased state activities, a share of GDP can lead to something called crowding out. And this view is that a rapid growth of government spending can lead to a transfer of scarce productive resources, labour and capital, from the private sector to the public sector, where relative productivity might be lower, might be lower. And that's called resource crowding out. So the government increases its uh, employment, and that might take away people who might have been working in the private sector. Uh, there's also something called financial crowding out. That's what we're going to focus on in this video. Financial crowding out is where the government spends more, borrows more perhaps, uh, and that leads to an increased demand for loanable funds. Loanable funds are those funds which are available in financial markets for agents to borrow. So you might be borrowing money from a mortgage. That's a demand for loanable funds. You might be a small business looking for a loan. That's a demand for loanable funds. And so to the government. The government goes into the the money and the credit markets and the bond markets in particular and borrows money. Uh, essentially needs to borrow to fund its own spending. Now, if there's a higher demand for loanable funds, that can in turn drive up market interest rates on bonds. The cost of loans might go up. And if that then feeds through the financial system, it might also increase the, the costs of borrowing for private sector businesses and therefore lead to a fall in their planned capital investment. So if the government's spending and borrowing more, and if that leads to higher interest rates, and if it also leads to higher interest rates for businesses, that can reduce their investment and lead to something called financial crowding out. Here's the diagram, because this uh, series is all about diagrams. On the y-axis, we have the real interest rate, the cost of borrowing money adjusted for inflation. On the x-axis, the quantity or the supply, if you like, the stock of loanable funds available for people to borrow. There's a supply of loanable funds from savers, and obviously the higher the rate of interest, the more they're willing and able to save. There's a demand for loanable funds from people like from businesses, from governments, uh, home buyers, and that's assumed to be negatively related to the rate of interest. If the rate of interest goes down in real terms, uh, there's a bigger, a longer queue of people wanting to borrow, longer queue of agents wanting to borrow. In theory, Economics is a lot about theory, isn't it? In theory, there is an equilibrium interest rate, R1, with quantity Q1. Now, if the government starts to borrow more money, if they run, for example, an increased fiscal deficit, that can lead to the demand for loanable funds going up. So we then draw D2. Make it clear to the examiner that that's due to higher government borrowing. And if the supply of loanable funds remains unchanged, you move up the supply curve uh, market interest rates then tend to go up from R1 to R2 and uh, quantity goes up from Q1 to Q2. And that's the key bit, really, that if interest rates go up and they then ripple through the financial system, if government bond yields, for example, go up, it might become a bit more expensive for businesses to borrow as well from the bond market or your mortgage might become more expensive and there might be some crowding out effects. Well, that's crowding out. An alternative view is crowding in. So crowding in is basically an idea put forward by Keynesian economists. And it runs as follows. When an increase in government spending and investment uh, is successful in causing an expansion of real GDP, this in turn can incentivize private sector firms to raise their own levels of investment and employment. So if the economy is doing better, if there's stronger growth... Uh, that can accelerate investment in the private sector as well. And also high real incomes, if GDP is going up, if per capita incomes are rising, that can also lead to increased savings, which increases the supply of loanable funds and therefore can keep market interest rates low. So we go back to our original diagram from a minute or so ago. There's the rise in government borrowing causing interest rates to go up. But if there's an outward shift in the supply of loanable funds, then... S2 becomes the new curve. And can you see the equilibrium there with D2 is there. So it's possible that if the growth of the economy drives even higher savings at each rate of interest, 
then the, the, the new curve S2 meets D2 at R1. And there's not necessarily that increase in interest rates that which you would expect. So this is a, a really good evaluation development of the diagram uh, to address crowding out. Well, so much depends, doesn't it? The evaluation so much depends on the extent to which government spending and investment is effective, is efficient, is successful. And whether or not in particular that you've undone some rigorous cost benefit analysis before you've laid down a new dollar of spending. Have you, uh, have you done some proper cost benefit analysis of the impact, including the multiplier effects? Also, this crowding out view assumes that government spending is funded by the state through borrowing. Of course, many investment projects such as Crossrail and others have been jointly financed by public and private sector. So there's a meeting, you know, it's essentially a, a private finance, stroke government finance uh, initiative. And also don't forget, we live in a world economy where lots of capital can move across borders pretty easily. Open economies, countries that are open to trade and capital flows, often they can attract loanable funds from overseas. They're not, they're not dependent purely on the domestic supply of savings. And that's a really good evaluation point to think about. Anyway, hopefully this diagram video helps you understand a little bit more about crowding out, especially if you get a question on fiscal policy. Thank you, take care and see you soon.